Today's scripture comes from Jeremiah 29, 4 through 14. In our scripture reading for today, the people of Israel have been taken into exile in Babylon. Their country was overthrown, and now they have been taken as slaves to Babylon. So there is this community of Jewish people living among the Babylonians, and they are wondering what is the faithful thing to do? Should they wait to restart their lives until the Lord delivers them from captivity? Should they try to hurt the Babylonians and destroy their communities? Or should they go ahead and rebuild their lives in this new land? Through the prophet Jeremiah, God tells God's people that they are to go ahead and restart their lives in this alien land of Babylon. God tells God's people that they should build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat what is produced, take wives and have sons and daughters, take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, that they may bear sons and daughters, multiply there and do not decrease, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you in exile and pray to the Lord on behalf of its welfare. For in its welfare, you will find your welfare. God is saying these same words to us today. As Christians in this world, you may sometimes feel like you are living in a foreign land. In the 1950s and 60s, the culture throughout the United States was very supportive of Christianity and going to church every Sunday. Everyone expected that their neighbors or co-workers would go to some church, even if it wasn't their own. <coughs> and if you were a businessman in the community, church was seen as a place where you could foster your good reputation and, and you made business contacts. But the culture in America has moved away from fostering faith. We got rid of the blue laws where you couldn't buy anything on Sunday. We got rid of them because we wanted to buy things when we wanted to buy things. And school events and sports teams used to avoid putting events on Wednesday nights, which of course was choir night for all of the churches. And they would certainly avoid Sundays entirely, because that was a day for worship and for family. All of those rules and expectations which supported the church are gone. In fact, sometimes people might think it a bit odd that you attend worship. I know that some of the youth sometimes get hassled when they tell their friends that they're going to church camp or to family camp at Milwaukee. So sometimes, sometimes you might feel like you have moved to a foreign land, a place without any moral grounding or decent values of any kind. And then, and, then, and then there's all these strange new gadgets around, like cell phones and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, and everybody's carrying a whole computer in their pocket, perfect for instant distraction from the people and the world around you. Some of you may feel like you've watched an alien invasion of your world. Your children, their grandchildren have relationships with their friends and families in ways that are completely alien to you. And you may find yourself wondering what to make of all this. Is all this technology bad? Is it destroying our children and their ability to socialize? And 
Isn't societies moving away from the church going to destroy our church and society? Shouldn't we be fighting all these things tooth and nail? To return to, return to the way that things were. But the words of our scripture reading for today seem to be saying that God wants you as a faithful Christian to adapt to this new environment. Just because someone is talking on their cell phone does not mean that they are necessarily distracted. In fact, they may be plugged into multiple conversations at the same time. They could be having a conversation with a friend on Messenger, or posting a picture to Instagram of, about having lunch with their other friends, and still attending the necessary sports practice or family event that they have to. I heard one report that said that this is the only way that our kids can have real relationships with one another. Because they are all so overscheduled that there is no way that they could actually see each other in person otherwise. They're all overscheduled. So God seems to be telling the church today to adapt to the environment that you find yourself in. Build your website and invite people in. And if people seem disconnected and superficial in your world today, then we need to be a place where that we welcome people, that welcomes people, and gives them a purpose larger than just themselves and making an extra dollar. The church can be that place where important conversations happen where sorrows and frustrations can be shared and healed, rather than hidden in fear and shame and work. Our adult Sunday school classes should be designed around holy conversations, along with studying the Word. Our social events should welcome people to bring friends and co-workers and then, and then provide them ways to meet and connect with others in our congregation. These kinds of things naturally happen in choir and bells practice and in yoga every week. Holy conversations before and after practices and workouts. As the church you should not fear technology and the changing society around you. Instead, instead, you can be a light in the darkness, a beacon of hope, a beacon of graciousness and generosity in this world, a beacon of the presence of Jesus in this world. Later in our scripture for today, God gives God's people a promise. God says, For surely I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare, and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. When you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. All of these new technologies are just additional tools for God to use. They may occasionally be a challenge to use for good, but the bottom line is that there is no true hope in the world except for Jesus. You can find lots of places for distraction, lots of clubs and teams to join, but the only one who can really care for you 
or for your neighbor or your friend, the only one who can love and care for your mind and your body and your spirit is Jesus, who gives eternal life and transcendent reality to his people every day. And he offers that same life and hope to the whole world. You won't get that on Facebook, or Twitter, or Instagram. You only get that with Jesus. You and I do not need to fear the strange new world that we live in, but embrace it with the presence of Jesus, with the love of Jesus, every day. His holy name.